Hello and welcome to Paris Set Me Free mini photo tutorials. Today I'm going to talk about a simple photograph in a, a part of a lovely scene that I came across as I was wandering through Paris with my camera when I had my camera because a couple of days ago the front two elements of my lens decided to fall out and smash on the floor. Uh, so I'm currently I only have two eyes at the moment instead of my usual three so I'm feeling a little bit blind. Anyway this was before that I was wandering through uh, some of the streets near a place called La Butte aux Cailles, which is in the um, 15th district, uh, no, 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 uh, the 13th district near Place d'Italie, and it's a hill, and there's lots of cute little streets, and this was one of them. And I came across this, it's winter, I took this photograph in uh, January, I think it was January or December, and the sun's very low in the sky, of course, so you get and um, some not only is the light warmer when it's low in the sky because of the angle that it's coming through the atmosphere but you get some lovely shadows which you wouldn't normally get when it's high up and here was one not only did I love the fact that um, the the lamp is actually almost almost stronger and darker on the building than in real life but um, also this building behind it gave it a has a, a strange graphic feel to it with the 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 round window and the square which and plus you have this graffiti which kind of echoes the lamp in a way i i don't know if it's supposed to be the lamp or not but anyway it's got these things coming out which might suggest light so and and also another thing is that this lamp here on on the uh building's wall is is bigger than the real lamp because of the angle that the sun's coming at. The the post is wider here and the lamp is almost twice as wide. Let's have a, a closer look at that. Well let me just show you the, the six pictures I took of that. That was the first one, the second, a bit darker. There I bumped the exposure up a stop I think, threw in an angle trying to play with these elements, the two bits of the the lamp, the, the original and the shadow, plus the this angle which echoes the angle of the post, plus the angles here, and then trying to do something with this uh, circle as well. There I exaggerated even more, and again, a wacky angle. It looks wacky from when, when the photograph is um, traditionally mounted, but I, if you actually mounted it to make this vertical it would be a completely different photograph. Let's see what what happened. I actually decided to make the photograph square in the end. Uh, I took I've I've put two photographs on my on my site. This one and this one. Now they're both not very conducive to to showing in in this shape of video. So let me just move this up and down a little bit. I made it square, which I thought was quite a nice composition uh, there. And here's the other one where I included part of the house. I included this circle up here, top left, tiny bit of branch, same distance between the top of the circle and the frame here and the edge of the circle and there. Well, slightly less here because the whole photograph is longer, is longer than it is wide, so you can echo that very very subtly by having things like the distance in between the top and the frame here slightly more than between the circle and the edge here so that complements the overall composition and it's a long it's a long photograph I made it purposely long although you can't see it in its entirety here because the um, the main subjects are long and tall so you can you can bring in the edges of the frame by cropping uh, somewhat and emphasize that that tallness although I didn't take them right to the top of the frame because there's this curious round window which I thought was nice as well uh, which is kind of balanced by the blue graffiti which I wanted to include in this shot because it's it's an interesting feature you've got a little bit of vegetation down here at the bottom and Lo and behold, a little bit of vegetation top left. So there's another little repetition, which is nice. Let me just go on to this one. 
the big square one which I I couldn't choose between the two I had to put them both in in the end and and it's a it's a gorgeous photograph look at the the colors um, that that lovely warm evening sunlight on a you get it sometimes in the summer but even even more so perhaps in the winter when when the light is so low so often that it, it just it's almost by default a lovely orangey color look you can see it's shining there and look here you've got a kind of it's not glass obviously it's just a shadow it's 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 bits where the light is being prevented from hitting the wall in fact but you can almost imagine the 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 this bit of reflection here you can almost see it here in the lighter part here and there's a great contrast between this which you can see it's glass it's lovely and smooth and here it's still it's got the rugged texture of the wall and the lovely richness the rich orangey going into sepia orangey brown uh, because of the the background of the wall and the warm sunlight and uh, it's a great contrast i think look at the detail a lovely crisp detail from my my x lens which i no longer have um <laughs> I'm now reduced to walking around Paris with uh, some crappy little, ca sorry, I mean with my um, my friend's uh, little compact camera, which uh, I must admit really <laughs> makes me cry when I see the quality compared to something like a, a good uh, good Nikon lens. Look at the crown there, the details, you can see every little uh, cr crenellation, do you call them? And there you can see it even more. And, and it's funny because in some ways the shadow is obviously, uh, as we would say, a uh, a shadow of the real thing and yet because it's been drawn out it's darker and here the detail is drawn out you can almost see the detail better in the shadow uh, than in in the real in the real thing except of course here there is no detail whatsoever it's just pure black so that's um that's what i've got to say about those starting from a a simple a simple uh, scene like this you have to decide what's the best um, I, I th when you look at this this shadow doesn't do too much unless you want just the classic what you saw but uh, no be a bit more creative than that decide what what's good about the picture zoom in on the detail and for me it was this lamp and its shadow that was the picture plus a little bit of the environment there's the graffiti and there's the round window bit of vegetation bottom right little bit of vegetation top left and and that's it and you end up with a very interesting shot it's here it's completely removed from its environment there's no actual sign that it's Paris for example in my case but it doesn't matter because I think the shot is strong enough if you know Paris you know that there's lamps like this if not well it doesn't matter because in its in and of itself you've got an amazingly beautiful shadow on a wall of a beautiful lamp so it stands it stands without any detail of of its environment although there's a hint that it's a place where people people draw graffiti on walls if you want one which gives a little bit more context then go for um, a shot which is slightly pulled out uh, still there's no hint that it's necessarily Paris unless you know Paris but it's the sort of shot which, in the context of an article on Paris, for example, would fit in very well. Well, that's, that's it for this one. Thanks for, for visiting and listening. See high-quality versions of these shots on the blog, parissetmefree.blogspot.com, and see you next time. Bye-bye. Depuis que je suis à Paris, le jour et la nuit, je suis gris. J'ai compris la douceur de vivre, je suis fou de joie, je suis ivre, depuis que je suis à Paris.